Find the general solution to the differential equation y double prime plus y equals secant of t. So as always, we need to first start off with our homogeneous portion in which we take the left-hand side equal to zero. And we, from there, create our auxiliary or characteristic equation where the power of r is equal to the amount of primes being taken on y. So y double prime is r squared and just y is no prime, so just the coefficient of 1, and that equals 0. So at this point, I expect you to know the process on how to do homogeneous equations from my previous series. So let me just go ahead and set r squared equal to negative 1, where we can take the square root to find the two roots of r equal to 0 plus or minus i, where alpha h equals 0 and beta h equals 1. This means that for our homogeneous equation, which is equal to e to the alpha t times c1 cosine of beta t plus c2 sine of beta t, that turns into yh equals to e to the 0 t, which is just 1, so just c1 cosine of t, the coefficient is 1, plus c2 sine t. This is important because we need to take our two functions being multiplied by c1 and c2 to be y1 and y2, which are needed to evaluate y particular, which equals v1 y1 plus v2 y2, where v1 and v2 are going to be the following. v1 equals the negative integral of y2 f of t over Ronskian, where we take the right-hand side to be f of t, and we are going to use the Ronskian approach, since it's much better than the system of equations in my opinion. And you have to just memorize this formula. And we also know v2 equals positive integral of y1 times f of t over Ronskian. And if you know from linear algebra, Ronskian is used to find out whether or not two functions are linearly dependent. So you need to take their derivatives. And then the determinant equals y1, y2 prime minus y1 prime y2. So using our y1 and y2 that we found here, we can evaluate Ronskin, which is used to evaluate v1 and v2, which can then be plugged into y particular, and then we have our solution. So over here, let's say y1 equals cosine t, y2 equals sine t, y1 prime equals negative sine t, the derivative, and y2 prime equals just cosine t. Plugging that in here, y1 cosine t times y2 prime cosine t minus y1 prime negative sine t times y2 sine t. And you can already see that there's a trig identity where it's cosine squared t plus sine squared t. And that, of course, equals 1. Therefore, Ronskin equals 1. Now we can use that to find v1 and v2. v1 equals negative integral of y2, which is sine t, times f of t, the right-hand side, so just secant t, over Ronskian, which is 1, so we don't even need to change anything, dt. This equals the negative integral of sine t over cosine t, since that's the inverse of secant t, dt. And obviously that's the integral or the negative integral of tan t dt. It's easier to memorize the integral of tan t, which is negative times negative ln absolute value of cosine t, and that's it. Factoring in that negative on the outside, it turns into positive ln cosine t. And that's v1. That was pretty fast. v2, on the other hand, equals integral of y of 1, which is cosine t times the same f of t, so secant t, and we can just leave out the one denominator. And fortunately for us, cosine t and secant t are inverses, so they cancel out to be one. So this equals the integral of one dt, or just integral of dt, which is t. So v1 equals ln absolute value of cosine t, and v2 equals t. So looking back at our y particular here, let me start that. That equals v1, y1, so ln cosine t 
times y1 cosine t plus v2 t y2 sine t. There is no simplification here, that's it. So let me rewrite that. Cosine t ln, absolute value of cosine t, plus t sine t. And as you know, the general solution is always y homogeneous plus y particular. Let's just add up our two solutions. We can use y homogeneous from up here and just add that to here and we're done. c1 cosine t plus c2 sine t plus cosine t ln absolute value of cosine t plus t sine t. Also, I want to point out something really quick, that if this t were a constant, we can call that, let's say, 2, we could technically cancel it out, because that is already encompassed by c2 sine t, so that would just be restating itself as a possible solution. But in this case, t is a variable, so you can't count that as a constant. However, this is our solution, and this is a pretty straightforward problem, nothing too crazy going on. If this video helped, I hope it did. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.